Hi, I'm Jimmy Cook from University of Missouri, and today I want to talk about some of the biologics that we've been using in small animal orthopedics. In terms of disclosure, I am a patent holder and receive royalties with some of the associated products. So first, we just want to talk about what is a biologic, and certainly that's going to depend on your perspective. Uh, the FDA definition will differ from what we think about in terms as veterinarians versus what the client thinks about, especially in some of the lay literature that's out there. And so it's important to kind of understand that that will be perspective driven. Also want to talk about surgical versus medical, and those can differ quite a bit. Today we're just going to focus on the medical or non-operative biologics that we've been using in small animal orthopedics. These can be prescription or they can be over-the-counter or homemade versions, and so we'll allude to that a little bit. And then certainly they can be point of care or uh, uh, bedside, or these can be ones that need to be sent out in terms of stem cells or other types of biologics where they would not be done right in the clinic. The major ones that we think about would be hyaluronin or hyaluronic acid or HA, platelet-rich plasma or PRP, uh, IRAP, bone marrow concentrate, stem cells, and gene therapy. We're mostly gonna focus on the PRP um, today and two different versions of that. We'll talk a little bit about the others, uh, particularly stem cells at the end. So what is PRP or platelet-rich plasma? Well, there's again been a lot of kind of controversy about definitions, but really the field has pretty much coalesced and come to a consensus in terms of saying that a platelet-rich plasma product is one where the platelet concentration in the plasma that you obtain using the technique of interest, that platelet concentration is greater than what's in the whole blood. And so it's just an increase in platelet concentration in a plasma-based product. I mean, interesting, platelets are amazing in that they have 1,507 unique proteins, and most of these are growth factors that can be very advantageous in terms of tissue healing, especially for orthopedics. So that's where this all really comes from. Uh, it's also a very broad-based therapy in that it can be anti-inflammatory, anti-degradative, analgesic, actually anti-infectious too. And so it has a, a really good effect in terms of the application that we're really interested in using. It. There are different types, though, within that big, broad definition. Uh, we don't have time to go into detail about that, but in general, there are kind of three types available today. The Buffy Coat system, you see three of the companies that produce those listed here. Plasma-based system, again, three different products. And then the newest, which is a combination of these and then adds flow cytometry, which the only one I know of on the market today is the Angel system by Arthrex. You can see that they vary in terms of the amount of blood needed to make the product, the volume then of the PRP that you're gonna use to inject that comes out, particularly the platelet concentrating ability of each. And then really importantly is also what you include with that. So when you concentrate the platelets, do you include a lot of white blood cells and red blood cells, or do you get rid of those? And that's really important then, of course, for the platelet to white blood cell ratio, which most people today think is the key in terms of which indication you're gonna use each product for. And we'll talk about that in the indications here. The two platelet-rich plasma techniques that I use are the ACP, or autogenous conditioned plasma by Arthrex, and that is a plasma-based system. So we take blood from the patient. In this situation, we only need 15 mils of whole blood, and then we place that in the special centrifuge uh, using their special double syringe technology to come up with plasma. In the dog, again, this is a plasma-based system, and in the dog, we're typically gonna get about two to four mils of the ACP after we process the 15 mils of whole blood. The other system for PRP that I use is also from Arthrex, and that's the Angel. And this is a very unique system that's just come onto the market. It is the only one I know of, as mentioned, that uses the flow cytometry principle. And what's great about that is that you can actually control then platelet concentrating level and white blood cell, red blood cell amount so that we can control the ratios 
and the concentrating ability for each separate indication, which we'll talk about here in a little minute. So this system is unique and we're just starting to use it in the canine world. And so we've done some initial uh, study to see if this really does pan out. And in fact, it does. So we are able through the settings on the machine listed here to control the platelet concentrating capabilities of the system. And then that lets us control our uh, PRP platelet levels to whole blood platelet levels. And you can see we get about from three to eight times concentration. So we can control that and control the white blood cell ratio so that we get from about 60 to 30. In this study, we used sedation in the DAWs. We did a jugular uh, venipuncture to receive the blood. And we got 40 mils of whole blood with 5 mils of the anticoagulant. So you can see the volume differences, 45 mils versus 15 mils compared to the ACP. So just some of the differences that we're looking at in terms of the two products. So what are the orthopedic uses for platelet-rich plasma? Well, this really kind of came to fruition in terms of Heinz Ward when he had his MCL injected a couple weeks before the Super Bowl and ended up being the MVP. So it really got a lot of press and a lot of interest, and it's good because it really can be very, very effective for our patients as well too. Tendon and ligament are really the primary indications along with in the joint for osteoarthritis. Some of the other ones are, are starting to get more data, and I think we need to be cognizant and aware of those um, research studies as they come out to see how effective they are. But I do feel like I can give you current evidence and a lot of support for using these in terms of core lesion and partial tears and tendinosis and tendon and ligament, and for osteoarthritis. So there's been quite a lot published in these areas. A lot of it's been in the equine literature, so we have uh, ready access to it in the veterinary world, and they've done a great job at looking at that. These are the studies listed here. A fair bit on the human side in terms of extra articular applications, and then also quite a bit in terms of osteoarthritis. One study on the canine side, and then uh, quite a few on the human side, which really gives us good evidence for the safety and efficacy in these applications. Three other uh, recommendations I would give in terms of publications are these are great reviews on the topic, and these are really specific to orthopedic applications, really talk about the different systems, the uses, and really the current status of thinking of where we're at with evidence and how we need to look to the future in terms of gaining more evidence for application, particularly with what indications and when are the remaining questions. So we performed a study when this first came out to look at ACP, Arthrex's version of platelet-rich plasma, compared to what we really thought was the standard of care for injections in the elbow, and that is another biologic. So at that time, we were using quite a lot of hyaluronan or HA combined with steroid for chronic osteoarthritis cases, the typical long-term elbow dysplasia, elbow osteoarthritis. We also then, of course, use it knee, hip, shoulder, and ankle. But in this study, we just focused on dogs with bilateral elbow osteoarthritis that could not be effectively managed to the client satisfaction uh, with current non-surgical. So all of them were on NSAIDs and other types of nutraceuticals and other products, and it wasn't working anymore. So we took these dogs, that are, as we see commonly, I'm sure you do in your practice, and we enrolled them in a prospective, randomized, double-blinded clinical trial. So we compared ACP, the autogenous conditioned plasma, to hyaluronan plus steroid with equal volumes, and then we assessed these, of course, all the same. And to cut right to the chase, this is published in the Canadian Vet Journal in 2013, but to give you the bottom line clinically is that we saw a very rapid response, as you would expect with the HA and steroids, so the lameness decreased at week one, but then um, was not maintained at that same level, even though it was better than pretreatment in the HA steroid group. Whereas we saw a little bit slower onset of action in terms of the ACP group, but that was maintained a little bit longer than the HA and steroids. So it was actually better in this middle period and equal in terms of the six months outcome. So a single injection, improved these dogs for six months after 
injection in both groups with ACP being better at the mid time points in terms of decrease in lameness. Similarly, in terms of pain, we saw the best response early with the HA and steroid, but a um, equal response and as long with the ACP group with even a little bit more reduction in pain in that group compared to the HA and steroid. So based on all that evidence in our study, what I currently do for osteoarthritis is I do still use both of these biologics. I will use HA plus steroid, and it's important to use triamcinolone only. That's the safest and most effective for these injections. I do that when it's a real flare-up situation, um, when they've really gone from doing well to doing very poorly so that we can get that immediate onset of action. But in the more chronic cases or after we've gotten it under control, then I do switch to ACP and use that typically with a single injection to last for about six months to effectively treat these cases that are no longer being effectively managed non-surgically and where you know surgery just isn't the best option at that point for whatever reason that may be, which is a lot of our cases. Let's talk about the other main indication then for use of platelet-rich plasma products in uh, veterinary medicine. And for me, that would be canine sports med. Certainly doesn't have to be the athletic doll, but the dolls that do get these problems. And so you can see this real spectrum here of tendon and ligament problems, all extra articularly. So typical um, sprains and strains that we see in everyday activity up to high level sports. And quite a number of these with the most common being iliopsoas tendinopathies. And so we treated all of these that you see and looked at these for at least one year after surgery and looked for return to level activity. And actually with uh, one to three ACP injections, we were able to get success in terms of return to activity and no need for further therapy in all but one of the Achilles cases and two of the iliopsoas cases. Importantly, I think it's critical that you get the PRP, in this case ACP, to the site where it can work. And so this shows an ultrasound guided injection of ACP in this iliopsoas tendinopathy. We can see the core defect here in the iliopsoas tendon and we're able to guide our needle in ultrasonographically to inject that core defect and make sure that we fill that lesion with the ACP and treat it appropriately. So when we focus these in then on iliopsoas tendinopathy in athletic dogs, I think this gives us a little bit more highlight in terms of the most stringent evaluation of this. So these were nine dogs that we were able to follow up greater than two years, all uh, performance dogs, all at a high level, and all with iliopsoas tendinopathies, either partial tears or core lesions in the tendons. We treated them with one to two injections of ACP, and they did have a very specific and detailed 12-week rehab protocol that went along with it. In this case series, eight of nine improved, and that was based on exam, ultrasound, and return to competition, return to previous level of sport. And seven of, nine of these nine were successful. So seven of nine returned to the same level of sport. One dog was retired, that dog was improved, but it was decided to be uh, retired. And one dog ultimately had surgery for the iliopsoas tendinopathy, which was a severe case with mineralization. So we feel it's been very successful. One other just anecdotal case report to show you another application. This is a seven-year-old male Labrador retriever that had this partial rupture of the right Achilles that you can see here. Here's the calcaneus, and this ultrasound shows the core defect here, the partial tear. And so we were able to inject that ultrasound guy with ACP. We rehabbed that dog for 12 weeks. You can see the healing that took, care, that took place here, very good healing that we verified before returning to sport. And in fact, this dog went back to very high level sport, as you can see here, and has maintained that level of performance for greater than two years after the single injection of ACP with the rehabilitation management. So for these lesions, I do use it. It is my first line of therapy. I do reach for ACP first. For core lesions and partial tears, if it's an extra articular ligament or tendon, the rehab is a critical component, so you can't just shoot the ACP in and, and do nothing else. You've got to manage these dogs, of course, 
well afterwards. But it really can be a big advantage in terms of speed and strength of healing and return to performance um, as we're looking for in these patients. The other ones I just want to mention briefly then is the bone marrow concentrate. And I think this is a really exciting uh, new area of biologics that can be very helpful. In short summary, it's really stem cells from that patient combined with that patient's PRP. So it's really a combination biologic that's autogenous and can be done bedside or in the clinic so that we can use it then at the uh, point of care. This can also be done in the ANGEL system, so that is what I really like about the ANGEL system is that we can do PRP and bone marrow concentrate in the same machine at the point of care so that um, we're able to effectively and efficiently treat these patients with either biologic that may be most helpful in that situation. In the equine world, the IRAP, or interleukin receptor antagonist protein, has been used extensively and it has a lot of great data behind it. We haven't used this as much in the canine world, but it certainly has its application. And if this is a system that works well for you in your practice, I do think the evidence is there for the biological effects, particularly in the joint. I think this is really good for the uh, intraarticular pathology situation and can be very helpful. I do want to just end them by talking a bit about stem cells. I think first and foremost, it's important to understand that we have to be cognizant of semantics when we're discussing stem cells because a stem cell is not necessarily a stem cell, especially if you're talking about the layperson compared to the, to the veterinarian compared to FDA. And so we really need to define that further. Really most of what's out there and available for clinical use are products which actually have few true stem cells. They're really what we would call stromal vascular fraction cells or connective tissue proge progenitor cells, and they are different. And we just need to realize that so that when we're talking with each other and communicating, we do that accurately. Um, so for instance, if you look at bone marrow derived sources that are not cultured, so they're not sent off. These are done table side, just what you get out of bone marrow. Only about 0.01% of the nucleated cells that you would retrieve from a bone marrow aspirate are true stem cells. Now, if you culture expand those, like some companies do, and you send those off, you can then get very high levels of true stem cells, but you still need to make sure you verify how they're testing for true stem cells versus just the stromal vascular fraction cells. With adipose tissue, again, less than 1% of processed cells uh, that are nucleated are actually stem cells, and that's even for the ones that are sent off. So what you're getting back in terms of cells, you need to be understand what's what in those cells and what you're really using. So those are important when you're talking about it and using it for best efficacy. Again, importantly, the FDA's position on this, and this does apply to veterinary medicine, which sometimes we, we don't realize, is that really the approved uses of stem cells are supposed to be autologous and minimally manipulated. So that means not cultured, not put through growth factors. That really means table side and only kind of mechanically derived in those situations. And so I think we need to be um, cognizant of that. And then that will always bring in and influence the cost to benefit ratio in terms of the biologics that we're using. So first, are they safe? Well, autogenous definitely are. So if you're using that dog's own stem cells, yes, they've been very safe. Allergenic have been shown to be early on um, pretty much considered safe, although again, that's not really within the FDA approval right now, certainly on the human side, and really that does apply to the veterinary side as well too. And then xenogenic, um, at least so far, are not safe, so we would never really consider that at this point in the progress. Do they work? Well, there is some evidence for them working, but we got to say, what are they working for and how are they working? So in equine tendon, in bone, in some tissue engineering applications, and in palliative applications, there definitely is some very good evidence, some high science to show that they do have positive effects. So we do want to keep that in mind, and absolutely they can work. Um, we just got to, again, understand what we're talking about there. In terms of regenerating cartilage or reversing or slowing down osteoarthritis, that's never been shown. So if those are what are out there or certainly what people are pitching to you, um, again, I would ask them for the evidence on that because it's really not there. 
what I'm alluding to is that they're, they're truly not typically in these applications that we're talking about today in orthopedics, they're not really truly regenerative themselves. So it's been well shown in very well done studies that they're really trophic. So those cells themselves don't necessarily uh, regenerate the tissue, but they can help, like PRP, like other biologics, they can help the tissue repair better. And that's really what we need to be saying when we're talking about these types of situations. They also do modulate the immune system, and that is one of the functions that they can do in a positive way in terms of those applications. So what's the evidence in canine? Well, we've seen that adipose-derived stem cells, which really are mostly stromal vascular fraction cells, not true stem cells, um, when compared to placebo, so just saline, they did see a subjective improvement that was better than just saline alone. Um, and that was a study that was published back in 2007. The problems with that is that, again, these are not really stem cells to the vast majority. And number two is that we're comparing it to saline rather than comparing it to another biologic or even a non-steroidal that most of these dogs are going to be on. So to say that we're better than stem cells for the cost and processing of that uh, situation, you know, I'm not sure if that's really clinically applicable in my mind. Similarly, with elbow OA, we just saw subjective improvement in uh, 14 dogs compared to baseline with no comparison group. So how would these dogs have done with just NSAIDs? or PRP or other treatment modalities that are available. So again, I think that that's a little bit um, still out there in terms of really good evidence behind it. The Minnesota group is certainly working on this area as well too, and um, have presented but not published yet some information that's encouraging with some of the effects compared to that. And then the only other thing that I've seen out there is a single case report about a tendon strain where the dog improved. So other than that, I don't think there's any other available evidence that really supports the use of stem cells for these applications currently. We've actually done quite a few projects looking at these in the laboratory and have presented or published in the human realm for our translational work. And basically to summarize these is we've looked at bone marrow derived stem cells, adipose derived stem cells, allogenic umbilical stem cells, and synovial derived stem cells and compared those to either HA and saline, non-steroidals, or the combination of those. And basically what we've seen is that they've never been better than any of those other treatments. So again, I think when we think about the cost to benefit ratio, we need to be really careful about considering that for our patients. Well, you might hear this and just say, that's fine, but my clients want stem cells. Well, I think again, we need to think about the options that are available, um, what's out there in terms of safety and evidence in terms of efficacy and then really look at the cost-benefit ratio and then educate our clients in terms of what they think they want compared to what they really want and what might be best for that particular indication based on current evidence. Thank you.